Good morning, everybody. This is the second session for the DNS Working Group. I hope we're all bright and refreshed at this early, unreasonable hour of the morning. Um, just before we get started, could I please ask you all to make sure that your mobile devices and other gadgets that beep and make noises are set to stun? That would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a few talks this morning, uh, following on from the discussion yesterday about the new version of Not Resolver. Uh, Marek's going to give us an update right now about the new Resolver from Not, which is called Not, I think. Marek. So, uh, good morning everyone. Um, six or seven years ago, I wrote a Python bindings for the Unbound and I thought my um, recursive DNS career was over. Turns out I was wrong and five years ago when I joined CZNIC, I started working on the not DNS, the authoritative part. And last October, I started on the recursive, which is the stuff I'm presenting today and uh, it's currently a work in progress. So for uh, the impatient ones, for those who have the screens in front of you, you can go to the website and just glide through the uh, documentation to get the feel, uh, it feels like. Uh, I'm going to give you seconds. So uh, it looks a little bit dreary. Uh, so uh, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to go to uh, the description of the library, uh, the, uh, the daemon, and the extensions for the daemon. Uh, just the concepts and the stuff that works already. And then I'm going to give you a quick demo. It's going to be a fake one, obviously, but a demo is a demo. Uh, so why did we build our own library anyway? The obvious answer is you could just you know, use something that's already present and slap a network daemon to it. And the thing about the libraries today is that they have this thing that I call the telegraph road effect. So back in the day when the telegraph was the tech thing, uh, they started building these poles to connect the cities. But in order to build them, they needed to build the infrastructure first, uh, the roads and the cities and all the stuff that comes along. But then the telegraph became sort of obsolete and there was no use for the towns and the cities. So uh, when we go back to the libraries, uh, they usually built around a specific technology, like the uh, storage engine or something, but when you need to replace it with something else, you need to replace the infrastructure with it. So it turns out it's much easier to write your own library anyway. Um, so uh, the library that we built provides two different APIs for the resolution. Uh, one which is just like the uh, get address info and one which is a stateful machine. And the library provides a few services like the resolution and a system for the extension, a cache and the reputation system for the name server so we can blame them for uh, answering badly or doing nasty things. So uh, this is a little bit simplified um, diagram of how the name resolution looks like. Uh, when I draw it, I realized the name resolution is really a data transformation in disguise. And you don't actually have to read it because the most interesting parts are these two. And so, so, so the library uh, implements a system of layers that acts like a little bit tiny state machines that change how the data is processed and how the data is generated. Um, so uh, the advantage uh, when, it's, when it is compared against the monolithic libraries is that you can mix and match layers. For example, if you're a local or the end user, you can just run a stab resolver and some cache. If you run a big server hosting farm or something like this, you can add the different layers of caches, you can add the iterator module or uh, 
module for statistics or maybe some filters against the DDoS or something else. But the thing is, everybody needs some, something a little bit different and it's possible with the layers. Uh, it also means it's a little bit more secure because there's less active code in, in each installation and that means a less surface area to me. So there are three basic layers that are implemented in the library. It's the iterator, it's the cache for records, and the cache for packets, which is used for the negative caching and the positive caching as well. So just to uh, give you a uh, quick example on the layers, the, the iterator layer just drives the query resolution that cooperates with the caches, and innovatively it does the, what I call the best effort QA minimization uh, it's best effort because it's not really a QA minimization because it stops minimizing the query when it reaches a zone cut. Uh, the reason why we do this is that some CDNs are broken and they give you an index domain when they shouldn't and they give you the yield data when they shouldn't. The thing is, things might break during the resolution so you have to stop at some point. It might leak some information to the name server that's one step above it but it usually doesn't. Uh, the cache isn't built around any specific storage engine, it's just an interface. Uh, right now we have implemented an LMDB based backend because I figured that's like what most people would use. Uh, it's persistent, so if you take out the daemon and restart it, you have the uh, hot cache already. It doesn't wipe its brains out. Uh, it's used for a uh, pretty much anything, you can tag it, like if it's a record, it's a secret, is it a DNSSEC data or something like this. You can replace it during the resolution and as I said, it's persistent. Uh, there's also a system for a uh, name server reputation because you have to identify which name server uh, answer badly or uh, there's a long round trip time or uh, something else. I figured it might be an interesting thing to map the health of the internet infrastructure sort of to make a map and maybe uh, <coughs> mail the individuals who commit crimes against the DNS, but I might be uh, charged for something. I don't know if this is legal actually, to my opinion. Um, so if we move to the daemon, uh, it's a little, it's but it's very simple, it's written in C because I know C and I quite like Lua, so uh, I try to double with it, honestly. Um, the Lua is actually used for pretty much anything from the uh, configuration uh, to the extensions and command line interface and all the interactions. You can even write layers that I mentioned before so you can tap into, uh, into the query resolution itself. Uh, I figured that might be interesting, for example, against the DDoS attacks, because the attack pattern changes very rapidly, and it's not very convenient to compile it into the code and distribute it anywhere, because if you just make a Lua package, you can push it to all the servers in the farm, and they can load it and be protected until the next attack comes. So, uh, so I said dynamic configuration, uh, it's dynamic because it's really Lua behind, but you can configure it like in a declarative manner, like you're pretty much used to it. Uh, in addition, you can enumerate the network interfaces, you can set up events. Uh, a lot of people template the configuration files. You don't have to do that with this because you have to check if the host name matches something or uh, do some preconditions, iterations, and stuff like this. So you don't have to use the Jinja or the Ansible to do this. For example, if you have a public network facing machine and an internal machine, you can alter the configuration based on this. Uh, the resolver supports the uh, modules written in C, Lua, and a limited subset of Go, because I realized it's pretty much impossible to call a Go code from C, not the other way around, but I wanted to try it anyway. Uh, as I said, you can tap it directly into the name resolution, so uh, with Lua that makes sort of an open recipe of DNS. 
Uh, you can script pretty much anything, subscribe to data, like if you have a EDCD daemon and you want to configure all the resolvers to the same settings, you can subscribe to it. You can publish them because I realized a lot of DNS companies are actually data companies. So you can tap into pretty much anything like uh, um, the round trip time in the resolution or uh, the behavior of the users, the content of the caches or the hints or anything else. Uh, with the extension system, we have included a few modules that you might use. Uh, one is for static hints that's going to be showcased in the little bit demo. Uh, the second one is uh, just a test whether it works with the etcd daemon. So it works. Uh, it can update its configuration from the, uh, from the peers. Uh, there is the cache control module for uh, operating the cache. Uh, and I'm writing uh, support for the memcached instead of the LMDB for some people that might want to use it. Uh, in general, you can replace pretty much any part of the library. So uh, I figured that makes it sort of uh, <coughs> power DNS kind of thing. So uh, to give a recap, we made a resolver library with uh, Stave machine API, uh, scriptable daemon, and a bunch of modules. We have a quarterly release plan, but things are not stable yet, so the APIs might break and um, it might eat you in your sleep. I didn't guarantee that. Um, to put it in some sort of perspective, we have built uh, buildings with the walls and uh, the roof, but the furniture is not there yet, so uh, it's not very comfortable. And now to the demo. Obviously, this is my terminal. I'm doing it live right now. So we just compile the demo. <coughs> it's quite nice. We have all the dependencies. Now we can start it. We don't have any configurations yet, so I just told him to listen on the localhost and some special port. It gives us this command line. where You can use it as a calculator or just evaluate commands. And so we did just that. We uh, evaluated all the interfaces that the daemon is bound to. Uh, we can load some modules like the static hints and the cache control. It just told us it read the ETC hosts and loaded some hints. Uh, we're not limited to that because we can, uh, you yeah. know, yeah, this give you a, well, before when I was talking about the layers, uh, this actually lists the layers that are active right now in the resolution, so you can see it falls through the iteration and then checks the caches and the hints. So uh, it does it in this order. So now if we can dig it, it answers to uh, recursive queries. We can have a look at it actually what it did. Uh, it planned the uh, query and then followed the uh, search path and finally led to an answer. Great. So back to the configuration now. Uh, there's some domain that we don't want to uh, translate to a correct address. So we just set up a hint for a bad guy to translate to localhost. And we can query it if it's active. Yes, it is. And now we can dig it to the resolver. It's going to translate the bad guy with no TTL to the address from the hints. We can check it from the logs because there was no search path and it was answered directly from the hints. So that's like the basic resolution in practice. And you can have a look at the web pages where you can find the project. Uh, we're on GitHub and our local GitLab as well. Uh, we've been building on Travis, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, the Coverity scan uh, just checks our projects for mistakes. And we also build the documentation on the readthedocs.org. Now, if you have any questions, I'd like to answer. Any questions for Malik? Sorry. Ed Lewis, uh, from my can I can't. Yeah. Um, I, you didn't mention DNSSEC, I don't think, in the slides. But I'm not yeah. asking mostly about that, but I also want to ask about uh, trust anchor management. Um, 
I'll, I'll talk later about the, the root key and all stuff. I just want to make sure that when you build these uh, tools now, the new recursives, and stuff, that they're able to learn trust anchors and all this stuff, which really hasn't happened that much. So uh -huh. I just want to put a plug in for talking about or adding concern over at some point trust anchor management and, of course, the DNSSEC, which I'm sure you're going to do. Yeah. The reason I didn't talk about it is that it doesn't validate yet. So uh, we have a module that's being built right now. But thank you. Uh, if I can take the time to ask a question myself, Marek. Um, <coughs> when do you think the software is actually going to be of production quality that be released and supported? Or would that be waiting until such times as you've got the DNSSEC validation element completed? Yeah. Uh, I would like to have the production ready version at the end of the year, maybe earlier. We actually have a release plan on our website. You, you can have a look at it. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Marek. Thank you. Okay. The next talk this morning is from Marco Prouse from DE Nick. Uh, Marco's going to be telling us about some interesting things that uh